Michael, you put some white on it, yeah? Hey, you've got more grey hair than I know, man. <laughs> Have you had a haircut yet? Yeah? We've had some good arguments, Tom and myself. Now I know why people wear earpieces. Never, ever happened. Come on. Hello and welcome back to From the Park, the official St Auburn City Football Club podcast brought to you together with Player Packs. Now today we've got a special episode and with us we've got our manager Ian Allenson celebrating five years of him at the club. How are you doing Ian? Very good, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad. Good. Also we've got Jake with us here. Hi Jake. Hi Ian, hi Will, hope you both well. Yep, good. Yeah, not too bad. So Ian, do you want to talk a bit about the last five years just in simple terms for you, what it's been like? A few ups and downs. I mean, I've, I've really enjoyed it. I mean, there is a few ups and downs. Um, I would say last year was obviously a down. I felt that, that every other year, though, we've always been in and around the playoffs. It had just been nice to to got the club into the playoffs in one of those sort of three years. So, unfortunately, last year wasn't as as, as good as, as to be expected. Um, but I think this year, you know, we've managed to turn it around. And it's just a shame we're, we're at the situation we're in at the moment. Now, Jake, obviously, as a fan, have you got anything that you've noticed that you can point out under Ian in that time? I think, like Ian said, he's always had a really competitive side. Even last season, we went away to teams like Weymouth, Bath, etc. and picked up brilliant results. But I just wanted to ask him, is there sort of like a one standout moment or game over the last five years that you've been here that, you know, I think fans have quite a few. I wondered if you have one yourself. Um, it's difficult because I think the first, the first spell in them... I took over and I think we had 14 games to go and we drew with Concord, lost at Ebbsfleet, um, lost at Bath. And, and I know Liam himself sat in the dugout and said, what have we just done? So, um, And then after that, I think there was 11 games to go. I think we won eight, drew one, lost two in the only two games. I would say um, certainly the way Western Supermare at, at home where Michael Falasita scored a great goal and Louis Fiapuna scored a goal. Um, unfortunately... You know, we're speaking today about, you know, how sad it was with people like Michael and, and not being in a position to to be able to talk about um, his life and how he was feeling. Um, but certainly his goal there. And I suppose there was probably five or six games there that made an head away where Michael scored again. Um, and then we go into Whitehawk at home um, and we won 6 nil. And I think Charlie McDonald got four goals and everything just sort of come into into place then. And then obviously the last game of the season, um, beating Dartford 4-0, which um, was a fantastic, fantastic day. And uh, I think in, in terms of where the supporters was and where the club was, was it was a great feeling. And then I suppose the Carlisle game really gave them a fright, I felt. And uh, if the referee does the job correctly, us being 1-0 up, you know, Junior Marais was, was, was giving them a torrid time and really he should have... Um, or their set and a half should have got sent off. It might have been a different result. Um, and I suppose they're probably the highlights um, in terms of in terms of um, not really reaching a playoff would probably be something for me that we've 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 probably out of the three years, out of the four that you know I've been the manager, um, apart from obviously the first year was just about staying up. Um, not reaching a playoff in three of those four years. And this year was probably the one time we had a really great chance of of making the playoffs. I'm not sure, and I'm still not sure, you know, if we'd have been good enough consistently over over 40 games. Um, but I think we'd have given it a real good chance this year. Um, but I, I certainly feel we've got a good chance or or might have a good chance of, of making the playoffs. Um, and that's that would be good. It'd be good for, for the football club. It'd be good for... Everybody involved in, you know, your guys and also the supporters, because uh, the one thing they've done is they've been very good to me and very loyal to me over over the five years I've been here. <coughs> so I know, obviously, um, like you said, you've, you've had a fair effect on quite a few people. Um, and I'm sure you probably expected me and Jake to just be sat here. But actually, uh, just going to join in now. We've brought in someone who's been a big part in where what you've done. So I think... Any minute now, David Noble, oh, there God. he is. He's going to be jumping into the call for us. Hello, Nobby. Hello. How are you? How are you? <laughs> Good. Good. How's your hamstring? <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Getting there. Is it? Uh, good. Getting there, yeah. Good to see you, mate. Good to see you. And you. Yeah, so we, we thought we could bring Nobby in to uh, 
share a few stories from uh, his time under you. So I don't know if nobody is there's any in particular that stand out as a particularly memorable one. Uh, no, not not really. But <laughs> no, you not that you can repeat, David. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a bit. It's a bit. It's a little bit blue, as you as you boys probably know under Ian. But um, I've had a great great four years under him. This is but well. I would say five, but this year has been a bit of a stop start and for everyone. But uh, yeah, I've, I've loved my time at St Albans. I mean, coming out of the pro game, I, I didn't know where I was going, what I was doing. And luckily, Lee's boy just messaged me if I wanted to keep fit and come along to training and, and the rest history. And and I've, I've loved, yeah, on my four and a half years at St Albans has been absolutely magic. Yeah, so, so Ian, and what, what's it been like for you to have someone like Nobby in the squad? Um, privilege, to be fair. Um, Will, um, I've said it to a number of people and, and, and it, it, it's probably just a shame that, that, and I don't want to speak out of order here where David is, but he's probably um, one of the most gifted players that I've ever had the privilege of working with. Um, and it's just a shame he's never really gone and graced the real top level of, of English football. And I know he's he's been around Division One, Division Two, and Division Three. But coming through, a number of people have told me he was the best thing that's come out of Arsenal Football Club over the uh, over the past 25, 30 years. Um, but just to have him around with the younger lads and, and everything, it's just been a pleasure to have. And you know, he knows. You know, we we have to try and play him um, a bit part more this year because. We haven't had enough games where he can maintain his fitness, um, but just to have him around and his experience around and, and, you know, to still keep playing at his age now has been a fantastic achievement on his behalf. Um, but I just, you know, for me personally, and as I said, I don't want him to take it the wrong way. I, I just like to have seen him grace a little bit higher than what he's done. Cause I think he could have played at that level if it had been given the opportunity. Yeah, I'll so, you later, you are. <laughs> <laughs> How much do I owe you for that? <laughs> yeah, well, well, thank you very much. He's full of compliments, and obviously he's given you the armband while while you've been here. So just like, how how is that partnership for you, normally having Ian and having it's, that kind of relationship? Yeah, it's great. I mean, I think it's grown every year. The the more we've got to know each other, the the better the relationship has has come on. I mean, at the start, I just let him rant away and <laughs> and that would be that. But now <laughs> I mean we travel we travel to away games. I go with his brother Graham and and James sits in the back and and so we get a spend a bit of time before we go to games and on the way back. So I'll get the full build up and then the <laughs> the full post match on the back on the way view home. of the game. Yeah. And uh, and I'd just like to add actually that um, Graham's just got a new motor, right? And it's got it's got heated seats. <laughs> so if it, I tell you, if I survive, if this season carries on and I survive a season sitting in the back with his seat and Graham, <laughs> and Graham have the seats, the heated seats on full power, red hot, and the and the, and the air conditioning on. And we are freezing in the, we need six blankets in the back. It is honestly it's hilarious. What, what you, so that's one thing we have to get over on the trips at the minute. But what you don't understand yeah, what you don't understand, <laughs> Will, is when you get to my age, son, your back starts to ache. So having that heated seat on the whole way there and the whole way back is fantastic. <laughs> honestly, you wouldn't it, believe it. For a, <laughs> whatever however far the distance, the seats on full pa- I mean, I've got them in my car. And after 20 minutes, you can't get them off. Nah. <laughs> they're, like, they're like the old electric blankets I used to have when I was growing up. They were, they're fent- oh, God. Uh, yeah, I was surprised his tracks here ain't melted. But, but uh, yeah, I'm just speaking for me and James there. <laughs> if, we get through, if we get through another few away trips without the cold, I don't know. So is that a suggestion as well to Lawrence, that potentially if we can refit the dugout with heated seats? Nice he, he wouldn't get out, well... No, no we need him on the side. So- we need him on the side of the pitch. You wouldn't get up off the seat I'm, if you had that. I'm actually getting to the stage, Jake, where I'm actually thinking that do uh, do I have to go and sit in the stands a little bit first half and then come down second half because <laughs> the old back starts to ache by the end of the game. I'm having to stand around, move around, and to be fair, I've always said it, and David will probably do it. He sees more sitting up a little bit. 
Mm. And you do stand him down. And certainly I've known a lot of managers who would sit up in the... How long would you last up in the stand, though? Oh, no chance, have I? I've got no chance. It'd be 30 seconds. The first thing <laughs> that he sees, he'd be down. I'll be arguing with somebody. In there, yeah. there wouldn't be a linesman or referee in there, though, would there? I'll be all right. Oh, they, they, oh, <laughs> yeah, I think they wrote a few letters to try and get him up in the stands, didn't they? <laughs> the linos, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's always the option to try and get sent up there by the ref during Never, the game. ever yeah. happened. Come on. Go on. Go on. Tell them what, what was Braintree last year. What was that? Your first booking, wasn't it? You know how important that win was, David. You know I know, point. but is it, but for no, him... No, I got think, a yellow card. Just think, just think of him as a manager and think he's only ever been booked once and that was last season. You you can't believe it. No, I got it, booked twice last year. I got booked at Haven. Oh, did for the, oh, yeah. For the assistant goalkeeper kicking the ball away, and I got the blame for it. <laughs> yeah. No, Weymouth, wasn't it? Was it Weymouth? No, that was at Haven. Oh, was it Haven? Haven. Oh, Haven. Yeah. yeah, that was it. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, so you got two bookings in one year. That's, God, yeah, that cost me. Down, that cost me 20 quid as well. £10 each booking. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, I've, oh, yeah. I've got a good discipline. I only ever got booked, I think, a couple of times in, foot, in, in, in my pro career as well. I didn't. I got one mm. suspension was for five bookings at Bulldog as player manager, and that's through sheer frustration. Sheer frustration. Must be charm. Must be charm. You know, yeah. You've got a way with words that keeps. Yeah, he's talking about like, flying. Flying wingers don't get booked, do they? And diving <laughs> weren't a thing in them days. <laughs> Heated. Yeah, that seats. must be it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least we know now we can we can see what we might need to invest in next season. I don't know. Maybe you can convince the players to take a pay cut to get some heated seats in the dugout. And no, it's something, it's something we we need to get some an update on the dugouts. That's probably one area we need do need to get them. So to look at those old racing seats, um, mm. they'd be decent in there, wouldn't they? I'll have to get somebody like Ferrari to sponsor us or something like that. So. Or you just just the one, you could have the <laughs> just one, one seat. Yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> No, it's been a, as I say, it's been a, it's been a great, a great four years with David. As I say, you know, he's been a, he's been a compliment to himself in terms of ways he's looked after his body, um, and his performances has shone through. As I've said before, his performances have been outstanding. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, thank you, Nobby, for joining us. No problem. It's been I've a missed pleasure. This opportunity. I haven't seen his face for two days. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Cheers. No problem. Cheers, okay. Gaffer. See you later, David. Look after yourself. Well done, Take care, mate. I thought he was going to stay on the call. Oh, no, no. It's all right. I've got to get down and get, get cooking dinner now. <laughs> Look after that baby, mate. I will. I will. See you Take later, guys. Take care, mate. Cheers, David. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, so obviously, like, I mean, we can delve a bit more into that Carlisle game, I think, because I don't know if Jake... Now we can bring Jake back in. I think uh, that game probably stands out to fans as one of the most notable games in the in the period. Oh, it was um, it was a great day, wasn't it, Ian, for the club and the community and the whole city. I mean, you've mentioned it quite a few times since, Ian, when we've spoken post match over the last three years. But the whole city came out. The whole build up, the two weeks before, mm. it was absolutely brilliant. And the first to score the goal that we did in the first five minutes. I mean, the place was a light, wasn't yeah. it? And I think it was just absolutely superb. And the amount of publicity we got from it and the amount of positivity. And even though that season, you know, we missed out on the playoffs, I think, you know, that again, that positivity that came from that game, it just helped carry us for so mm. much of the season. And I think it's helped keep... Well, I think it connected us, actually, with a lot of new fans in the city. And it's been one of the best moments yeah. in the club's history in a long time. Yeah, I think... Uh, and I still say it now, I think... And it was very difficult because... Um, Allowing Junior Marais to, to go and join Peterborough was the, was the correct thing to do because when he joined us, it was that we would try and help him progress in his career. If anybody came in for him, we wouldn't stand in his way. Uh, and, and the football club did exactly what we said we would do and we didn't stand in his way. Uh, we got paid um, some money for him, which was, which was, which was good money for, for Junior at that stage. He'd only been with us for sort of five or six months. And the boy went on and he's done great. I still think it probably didn't help the second part of the season because we never really replaced him. And that was probably the one the one um, poor decision in terms of 
losing Junior, but I never really replaced him um, and with the same sort of style or same sort of player. But halfway through a season, it's really hard to go and get uh, a Junior Marais halfway through a season. And, and we didn't manage to do that. But um, I just, just while we're talking, I, you know, I go back to when I first come in and that squad we had then, um, which with the Louis Furpunis and, and the Chapels and the, and the Ben Martins, and that was a really good team, you know, Sam Corcoran. And it would, if you could have kept that team together, but kept them all fully focused on, on what we were trying to achieve and do, they were a very, very good side. And you see, once we won them over and got them playing, they were as good as anything in the league. Unfortunately, they were getting, all getting to that stage with a little bit on in life. And if things weren't quite where it should have been, you know, it just sort of left a, f- a few little holes and, uh, and in the end, I felt we had to just break it all up and start again, uh, which was a shame because that was a good side, a very, very good side. Yeah, and to be honest, I think one thing I rarely see touched upon in the media is what it's like for clubs at this level to kind of have that situation where you want a player to progress. So what's it been like for you as a manager to have someone like Junior go up and play in the, the levels he has? I think it's great. I mean, it's obviously, you know, I get great at, at enjoyment out of it. I mean, on a on a Saturday night or Sunday, I'll go through when Junie was at St Mirren to see if he'd played or, or scored or David Moyo at Hamilton and uh, David Longking at New, Newport County now, even down to um, Ben Wyatt who's at, at Sutton. You just want to see these players uh, move on. You want to see them to improve and enjoy, uh, and enjoy themselves and, and, and try and play professional football. The biggest thing that it, it means we have to start again. And we have to go out and find new players to replace these players. And then we've got to just hopefully when it comes to the the end of the season that we can retain these players. Last year, we we did some good business and, and we did it quite early and we retained the majority of the squad. I've, I said it last year and I'll say it now. In March, when the season came into lockdown, we was as good as any team in that league. Um, it had taken a long time to get where we needed to get to. But by bringing Harry Forster and Lewis Gordon in from Watford and uh, and Frankie Masunda in from, from Luton, we, we were a decent side. Uh, we were probably still one four short of where we should have been, but we wasn't a bad side. And I think the, the performances and the results started to show as, as the season went on. First part of the season, we were, we were we, technically I felt we were very good. We just know had no physicality about our performances. Yeah, so obviously you've just touched upon um, Junior and what it's been like having him. And actually now, um, joining us, there he is. Oh He's my God. In the God. Cool. God, you put some weight on in you? No, if I take my top off, you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> are you? Oh, you got what? Yeah, so well done, little man. How are you? That's a big surprise. Oh, okay. hey, you've, hey, you've got more grey hairs than I know, man. I tell hey, you yo. what. I've just give you a right little tribute as well. Oh, serious? What was your tribute about? I'm just saying how good you was for us, mate. And uh, it was a pleasure oh, to mate. have you around. That's amazing. That's brilliant. Well done. Yeah, honestly, it, I was. I, I'm always. I'm always bigging you up, man. Yeah, thank you, you mate. Um, Appreciate that. You made. You made a massive difference. Um, not only like bringing back, bringing back my joy for football, man. You know what I mean? And you gave me a platform. You obviously yourself and St. Albans gave me a platform to come and express myself to enjoy it again, you know? And I wish there were so many managers that was was like you who actually believe in me and understand me. And for me, man, I just salute you for everything you've achieved and what you're about to achieve. I wish COVID didn't take a toll on what's going on because I know you guys would have gone the way. And any club in any club in that division deserves to be promoted I just know there's only one team that deserves to go up to that next level and I feel like you lot can go to the next level and the next level with your guidance and with the chairman's guidance mate so honestly it's a wonderful club I appreciate that mate and I'm sure the chairman and, and everybody at the football club will, will, uh, will thank you for your kind words mate so I really do appreciate that so no 100% man how are you been, how are you, been, you, doing, uh, you what how are you <laughs> I keep telling you get your manager at St Mirren to ring me and I'll tell him where he has to play you he keeps playing you down the wing Mate, he's been playing me right wing back. I just tell you that. <laughs> I was playing right wing back for for a while, and I was just like, they just don't understand. I just think they just people just don't understand me really. And I feel like it's a it's a it's a game where like you know you're quickly judged by people where people don't really spend time to try and understand you as a person yeah. and understand 
me as a whole. And with that's the, the good thing with you. You understood, you, you took time to understand me and understand where you can get the best out of me. And I think that's why I flourished so much. And with Grant McCann, I think Grant McCann kind of took a leaf out your book in that sense because I started doing well before I got the injury. You, and you can... You was really unlucky with your injury as well because you was flying at the time, weren't you? And, yeah, of course. Uh, it just set you back sort of six months. But again, talking about your injury, it was, it was just a sort of side foot, side foot pass, wasn't it? The next thing... Yeah, you... literally. Literally, just a pass, um, pass and then bang, my quad gone. And I'm just like... How is this even possible? And then you just you start thinking different things. And but listen, it just makes me it just made me a stronger person. And then a yeah. couple months down the line, I've done something else. And then a couple months down the line, on something else. So is it, it's just one of these things where we just got to get through it. And then you know, it's, hopefully, it's, I come through the door stronger and better than ever. It's a funny story, you know. When I when I first signed Junior at Boreham Wood, I went uh, the agent or somebody had rang us to say, "Look, Junior Marais, go and have a look at him. He's playing at Beaconsfield for Wickham." Um, yeah. so I went and watched him and they were playing him left wing but I fell in love with Lee Angle so I went back and I spoke to the manager the next day I said look can I take Lee Angle off you <laughs> and I said but I'd gone to watch Junior and he went oh you can take the both of them if you want I went alright I'll have the both of them and uh, we never looked back did we I mean as a partnership no. you two were you two were untouchable no, of course. as no, a partnership 100% mm. now me and Lee I love I love playing with Lee because mm. we obviously we understood each other and obviously, mm. you you knew that as well. And obviously, you could see that we we done well, even with the, the season where we got promoted. Mm. You know what I mean? And it's just... I, I've got loads of just good, good things to say about you. There's nothing negative apart from you get angry at me all the time. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I get nah, angry with everybody. No, nah, honestly, when it, you're angry at everyone, yeah? But when it comes to me, oh, my God. <laughs> your anger just goes to 110%. <laughs> but no, nah, I just knew that. I just know every time you you had a go at me or shout at me, I just knew that you cared about me and you just wanted the best for me. So I never took it in a personal way where I thought, oh, Gaff was just onto my case. I just knew that you you actually genuinely liked me as a person, and and for me that was a big thing for myself. But well, that's what I said, and, and, I, and the one thing I said to you when you know to come and to come and join us at St Albans was was to come and enjoy yourself and and be yourself, and that was the most important yeah. thing. And I think you did that and. You know, as I've said earlier, your performance against Carlisle, and I know Grant Grant was there that day, you know, just to, yeah. to play and start like you did. And, you know, they couldn't handle you, could they, Carlisle? You was just causing them so many problems. And uh, and as I say, nothing gives me more pleasure than seeing people like yourself, Junior, who, who put a shift in for the club, first and foremost, but put a shift in for me as well. And, and, and any player that does that, they deserve, they deserve all the credit they get if they go and play at a pro level. Uh, and we've got some, you know, players now that you know if they listen and learn and, and spend a bit of time with us you know I think we could progress them as well but they've got to be patient and uh, no, I think course. some some people need to be playing week in week out at this level rather than thinking they can go and play at the next level now and sit playing yeah. under under 23 football or sit not in the squad because you need to be playing football all the time. No 100% and I think that's that's where a lot of youngsters understand where football is important you know, and obviously when I was when I was 18, 17, 18, I was going on loan, going on loan. Like, it's done me the world of good. And even though, obviously, I had to drop out the league to get back in the league, you know, it's done me a world of good. So, I, for me, I, I agree with you 110% because if a lot of them, instead of come out of 23s and go and play men's football, listen, the sky's the limit, you know, and you can go and achieve anything you want to achieve. But some of them just, it's just, com just wanna, they're just comfortable. And they're just comfortable in the setup in you know, on the 23s, but they don't look at the bigger picture until it's too late. So, and that's exactly that's, it. You know, I think you summed it up there in one go. It's 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 being patient, but also, as I said there, you need you need to you need the progression, but you need to be playing football as well. No, hundred percent. No, hundred percent. Wow, man. <laughs> and how's it going it's now? Are you a bit frustrated or? Yeah. Yeah, I guess, you know, but I'm just, it's a, one of them ones where I just feel like with football, you know, you always have a patch that it sometimes is rough, but you just got to get through it. And I just feel like at this moment in time, I know I've been through so many rough patches and you're thinking, when is it going to be my time where I get a little bit a luck, a run a luck? But it's just one of these moments where this, this time has just taught me a lot about myself as well and just makes me mentally stronger for what's ahead and what's to to achieve more.
And I just that's just where I'm at at the minute. Just keep myself in a positive space and just keep working hard. And I know that I will get that. I'll get that luck that I've been working so hard for. You know. And, and you do if you work hard, you will. And you, and you, it will come. And it's just a one goal here, one goal there, and everything just turns on on its head. And the confidence comes flying back. And football's all no, about confidence. Football's no, all hundred percent. If you've got confidence, then you, your football will come through. No, hundred percent. Hundred very. Very hundred percent. But honestly, I'm buzzing for you, man. I'm proud of you, Gaffer. Honestly, <laughs> you've been amazing, man. Thank and you, I mate. know there's so many good stories, and like I said we've had so many good memories, you know. And obviously, I just wish you the best. And I know you're gonna be very successful in anything you do because you're a top man. And you're top. not only a top manager, you're a top person as well, and an angry one as well. So uh-huh. I give you that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jim. I appreciate that. It's brilliant. And you got a wonderful yeah. family as well, man. So send everyone my love. I will send do. the chairman my love. Send yeah. everyone in the the club, my love. And I know, obviously, the sad news with Fenners, honestly, man, that was a, that was an excellent man myself. He gave yeah. me, I remember he gave me a, um, a shin pad. And I could never, there's every game I play, he says, you best wear the shin pad. And I wore, I wore this shin pad every game. So, yeah. I, honestly, there's so many good memories about this man. Yeah. And I just, condolence to him and his family and everyone yeah. who loves him. I went, I, went, I went to the funeral this afternoon. It was a lovely funeral. It was really good. Yeah. And, uh, it was a good send off for him, and he deserved it. That was a good thing about it. Nah, he's a wonderful man. He's a wonderful man, <laughs> the strongest man, the sh- one of the strongest man I know. Yeah. And, uh, honestly, man, he he made my time at St Albans even even more great than it was. Yeah, brilliant. And obviously, man. <laughs> nice. I send work, love mate. to his family and everyone. Yeah, we'll do. And mate. I send he's love still- to everyone as well. Yeah, he still can't hear though. <laughs> he. He was so deaf, that bloke, honestly. You wouldn't believe it. Even his daughter, I speak to his daughter, and she said they used to call him everything, and he, he just didn't hear him. He just carried on doing what he was doing. And that's what made him amazing. Just, <laughs> you could call him anything under the sun. He would just get on with it and just do what he's doing, man. So, no, nah, nah, I keep, commend you, you boss. Keep, you keep doing what you're doing, mate, and uh, appreciate the kind words. No, nah, 100%. Yeah. Send my love to the whole family. I will man. do, mate. Top and man. same to you. See ya. Take care, Top mate. Man. Thank, Thank you for joining you us. Later, See ya, Jay. Thank Top you. Man. Bye-bye. Yeah, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, that was a surprise to see him. That's lovely. He's a, he's a smashing lad as well, isn't he? So he's such a good boy. He's done well there, Will. Bloody hell. Yeah, I mean, like, obviously, Junior, like you said, um, it's been nice for you to watch him go on and, and do so well for himself. Yeah, I mean, he's just, as I say, he, he is one of them. He's an infectious person. He's infectious to you as an individual, but he's infectious to the change room as well. And, and when Junior's on it, the, the, the change rooms on it and and he does he does beat himself up a little bit uh, and that was really trying to get the best out of him because when he when he's when he's good he's laughing and he's got a smile on his face he's fantastic for any football club and for the change room because he's he's a laugh a minute he wants to be everybody's friend but you know he's a he's a he's a good player as well and that's the thing and all he needs is a goal here or a goal there and it'll just turn the whole of his season around I still think as I said it I watch him at St Mirren now he's playing on the wing just go and stick him in, in the front area and he'll score your goals. And, you know, he, he's just like a little battering ram, isn't he? Yeah. So now uh, he is back and, uh, yeah, someone a bit closer to home and someone who, who you've worked with this season and for a long time past. Um, Not Chris Winton. He's worn, worn the armband a lot this oh year. Oh, my good God. Hello. <laughs> oh, he's not quite connected to the audio yet. <laughs> there he is. He does look weird, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> How are you, mate? I'm good, are you? We've got Arsenal shirt on. What's that? Actually? Oh, good lad. Well done. You know, you know, you know, no one's allowed to sign for St Albans unless they support Arsenal. You good. Know that, it's about time we made a rule like that. You didn't know that, Jake, did you? <laughs> <laughs> actually, you learned something new today. Every time I have a meeting with somebody, I'll say, who do you support? They say Arsenal. Okay, you can sign for us. If they support Tottenham. They can't, they can't sign for us. Simple as that. I'll best hand in my resignation any minute now. <laughs> I'll be on the way out. <laughs> yeah. So, Tom, obviously, thanks for joining. You've you've played a lot under Ian. Do you, I mean, how's it been? How's that time been for you? Eventful. <laughs> there's been um, there's been a lot of ups and downs. Um, but I think that the fact that I've been here so long shows how enjoyable it's been for me working under Ian. You know, being at a club at this level for five years is is a big achievement, you know, and he was at, at Boreham previously before us for a long time. So it shows that, you know, he's obviously good at his job and clubs want to keep him around. 
Yeah, and, and obviously, Ian, you've you've uh, when Nobby's obviously, like you said, the, the schedule this year has been a bit up and down for his fitness. You've trusted in Tom to to lead the team, and how important has it been? Uh, I think you know when I first come in, I have to say I, it, Tom was one of them. I thought, well, I'm not quite sure about him. I hadn't seen enough of him, where I knew a lot of the other players. I knew you know Louis Fupunis and Chapel, and I didn't know much about Tom. Um, and he'll tell you the first thing I did was cut his wages, um, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, the, the, whether it was right or not, it, but that's what I felt. We had to try and get the budget back in line. Um, but Tom's always my go-to man. I know exactly what I'm going to get from him. Um, you, you know, you trust him. He's one of them that when he goes over the white line for you, you know what you're going to get. Uh, he's going to run through brick walls for you. Um, he, he, he plays with his heart. I've always said that. Um, I think it shows with the the arm injury he got the other or the shoulder injury where he dislocated his shoulder again the other day. Literally within three weeks, he said, I, I, I can go on the bench for you this week. And uh, we had to just hold him back for probably another two weeks before we, we you know, allowed him to start playing again. But that's the sort of lad he is. Um, he'll run for a brick wall for the for the club, for me and for everybody. Um, and, and he's just one of them. It's just, you know, if you had 11 Tom Benders in your side, you wouldn't lose many games. Simple as that. Yeah. And, and Tom, what, what have the highlights been for you? Um, this season and beyond the whole time you've been playing under Ian? I think, I mean, this season is it's pretty much all been highlights. Um, I think barring the, the bishop Saltford game, there hasn't been been many low points this season. You know, sometimes it it, it just kind of clicks. Um, and I think this season we've got a good bunch of lads that all work hard for each other. And, you know, I think it shows, you know, this season seems to have, have been so far one of them seasons where, it, it just works for us. You know, what what we're doing is working. And I think over the past five years with me and Ian, I think, you know, you've got the FA Cup run with the game against Carlisle. You know, you've got the first half of first half of that season really, up until uh, up until the January when we when we lost junior. You know, that was a, a massive high. You know, that first six months, I think we was, you know, top of the league, I think, at, at Christmas or there or thereabouts. Um, but I think one game that always sticks in my mind is is the, is the Dartford game. You know, last game of the season and we win, we stay up and they win, they get playoffs. Um, and I think what, what Ian done the back end of that season was amazing. You know, the players he, he brought in, you know, he brought JK back in and, and put him in midfield and... You know, we wasn't a great team, but we worked with what we had. You know, we was a big physical side and and we done what we had to do. And we worked so hard those last 12, 13 games. And to finish that season off with a 4-0 win to, to secure the safety was just unbelievable. And I think we spoke about it earlier. We just said there, this, the side that we had then, I felt was as good as what we've had at any stage. Unfortunately... You know, players there. When you got them on side, they were they were very very good players, and they and they could damage a lot of teams. When if you just if they just sort of lost their focus a little bit, they it, it, it can cause you a problem. And that's why they were in the situation they were in because they're good players, but they just couldn't get them focused on on playing football. Once we got them focused, we was I think the, that period from January to to December, um, we'd have won the league. In, in terms of a of a ten month season, you know, from from you know that January onwards to to the end of December, we were as good as anybody in that league. And now also, Tom, uh, just something that I thought we'd touch on, based on what Junior had said, and based on uh, what, what we've discovered so far. What's it like constantly being shouted at by Ian? <laughs> <laughs> Annoying. <laughs> we've um, had some think... good arguments, Tom and myself. Yeah, we have. We've had some crackers. Normally on a weekly occurrence. The, the, thing, um, the thing is with it, with Tom, you can, you can, uh, and I've probably used him as a bit of a scapegoat because I know he can take it. Um, but sometimes, you know, you've got to give the team a bit of a rollicking and Tom's probably on the back end of it. And sometimes he feels it's a little bit unjust. Um, but we have a conversation afterwards and, and then he agrees with me and I'm right. So... <laughs> yeah. I think, you know what, the, the, first, the first year with Ian... He was he was constantly on my back, and you know I used to drive in with Lee Chapel and Sam Corker, and and they used to go, do you know what? He loves you. And I'd be like, you've got to be kidding me. He's 
he did not stop shouting my name from the sidelines. <laughs> and there's one thing that always sticks in my mind, Ian. Bath at home, and I think we lost 3-0. And I passed the ball to Ben Martin, and he let the ball oh, roll under his God foot by miscontrolling it. You. And they went and scored, and it was my fault. Oh, no. <laughs> it was my fault. I don't know how it was my fault, but it was my fault. Because you should have seen the state um, that Ben Martin was in when you passed him. To... <laughs> <laughs> but I think... Um, I mean, there's another moment that sticks out in my mind, which is massive for me. And I think it was, I mean, I know personally that uh, when Ian first came in, I wasn't i wasn't having a good time on the pitch. Um, I mean, my performances wasn't, wasn't what I expected of myself. Um, and Ian stuck with me. You know, he, he kept playing me when it would have been very easy for him in the position that we was in to, to get rid of me. And I think the se- the ne- next season I-, I played well. And I think at the end of the season, when I got the awards, Ian got interviewed and I always remember them saying to him, you know, you was probably unsure whether you was going to keep Tom or not last season. You know, you, you was probably going to let him go. And Ian jumped to my defence straight away and said, you know, we was, we was never going to let him go. We always wanted to keep him. Um, and we wanted to keep him around the squad and, and, and keep him at the club. Um, and for me, that was a massive thing. You know, he, he stuck by me and he trusted me when, you know, a lot of others wouldn't. Um, and for me, you know, that, that was massive. It, you know, everyone just wants to, to be at a club where they're, they're appreciated and their hard work's recognised. And it's something that I've just tried to repay back to him for, for the past five years. And it, as I say, it, it, it becomes because you do get you do trust certain people, uh, and Tom is certainly one of them that, that, as I said, I can trust. And I think he's been a little bit unfortunate this year because I really do believe he, he, he'll make or, or has made and will be, you know, a fantastic centre half. Um, I felt last season when he went back to centre half, he was the reason why we turned our season round. Um, I think anyone that plays alongside him um, finds it easy to play with him because he will talk with people through the game but I also think he protects the left side as well so if we have a left back that's going to attack Tom will do that but you know young Joy McKenna's come in and done extremely well you know we've only conceded 10 goals in 15 games and that's very much part of being Tom being at left back Joy Dave, and James Kolotsky and Michael Clark and Devontae have done it you know so it's difficult but as I say I still feel Tom as a centre half would be would be a great bonus for us and I think that's where his best position is and He'll probably tell you that's his best position. That's where he prefers to probably enjoys more playing there more than anywhere. Yeah, and Tom, Tom, how nice is it having a manager who who believes these things about you and puts that faith in you? Like you just touched on, obviously, when you first arrived, but even now, to, for him to come out and he he takes in what what you want to do as well. It's not just about the team. How good is that for you and and where you want to be? It's it's amazing because I feel like it not necessarily takes the pressure off of you um, because I feel like we we all kind of put pressure on each other to perform and, you know, Ian puts pressure on me more probably more than anyone else to perform. But it, it just gives you that confidence. I know that if anyone on our team gives the ball away, Ian will be the loudest one in the ground shouting at us. But at the same time, I still have that confidence that, you know, if I do make a mistake, he still wants me to do it again. He might shout at me. He might have a go at me. Oh, no, sorry. There's no might about it. He will shout at me and he will have a go at me. <laughs> but I know that he trusts me to go and do it again. And I know that, that when we have had conversations about me playing centre-back or left-back and, you know, he knows that I'm a better centre-back and I would agree with that. Um Although saying that, Ian, do you know what I did find? I went, uh, I got given a box by my mum of a load of stuff out the loft. I found a, uh, a little record from when I was at Colchester under, I think it was 16s. And I was fast. <laughs> All the speed testing, <laughs> I was fast. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, you know, I, I, I don't have that pace anymore uh, for one reason or another. Um, so for me, I do find it more comfortable at centre back. Um, but whether I'm playing centre back or left back, you know, I know that Ian's always got that confidence in me to to do a job for the team. And that's how it should be. I think I've got, you know, we, we have confidence in all of the all of the players. Um, and and, and they, um, what you're fine with me, and, and it's it's more frustration with me because I know how good these players are. I watch them in training, and at times they 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 
they frustrate the living daylight something because they're so good at keeping possession of the ball. And sometimes we just really, you know, Braintree for me, we couldn't pass water and we, do, you know, everything that we, we're good at, we didn't do on that game. Um, and then we, you know, make silly mistakes and, and it costs just two points. And they're the frustrations that I get because I know this lot have done so well this year. Um, and and, and if, if the season is allowed to end or wherever it is, is that, I've said it and I'll say it again is, you know, we've got a squad here that, that can make the playoffs. And then when you make the playoffs, it becomes a bit of a lottery anyway. Um, but this little lot on a one-off game, I put them against anyone. You see against Sutton, you know, they push Sutton the whole way and you see what Sutton are doing in the National League now. Um, so, you know, a one-off game, you know, this lot, can they, they work as hard as anybody in the league. Um and they've stuck to their task this year. And we've just got to just have that opportunity to try and finish the season off. It'll be great. Yeah. Well, thank you, Tom, for coming and sharing some insight with us. It's been a, it's been a pleasure. I mean, I only come on here because I was waiting for my podcast after five years. <laughs> <laughs> and do you get paid for coming on, Tom, as well? <laughs> You're getting paid? Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> we'll have to put it in the pipeline. In the pipeline, Cheers, I'll Tom. have it in my next contract. Thank you, mate. <laughs> Cheers, thank no you. worries. I'll speak to you soon. Don't know, mate. Speak to you in a bit. Bye bye. Cheers. Take care. Bye bye. That was a good surprise. Just got a text message from Chris Winton. You ain't got him on there, have you? God almighty. <laughs> yeah. So, so we obviously discussed it with Tom there. You've had a few players who you've kind of relied on over a period of years. Zane being another one. How how important are these guys to, to you and, and what you try? I think it's, it's I think it's massive in terms of of continuity at any football club. You know, there's there's players that we've lost and I didn't want to lose them. Unfortunately, circumstances um, make things like that happen. At the end, of, I mean, Jake's been around the same period as myself, and you know, at the end of each year, I'd love to to probably sign everybody we had. You know, I tried to sign Lewis Golden in the in the summer. I tried to sign Harry Forster in the summer, Frankie Masunda in the summer. These boys that uh, you know want to go on and, and be pros somewhere. So, you know, you have to you have to respect their decisions. But and then you have to rebuild because you haven't got a left back, or I have a left back with Tom Bender, but I want to play Tom Bender at centre half. <coughs> we haven't got a right winger. Um, and and you know you've got to you try and replace these players, and then hopefully the players that you replace them with are going to be as good as what you're losing. And that's probably been the biggest bugbear where where I've found it is that every year we're having to rebuild, and every year we're having to to lose three or four players and bring three or four new players in, and it takes a bit of a time to to adjust. And that's why this year would be great if we could get the majority of the players over the line that we want to keep. And then we can start planning again, wherever it will be, wherever it'll be in two weeks' time, two months' time, or five months' time. You know, I want I want to try and keep the squad together because I think if you can keep it together and add one or two bits or three bits of quality to what we've got, we can we can be a very good side going forward. And now I know Jake will know a lot more about this than me. If Jake can touch on sort of the earlier period of Ian's reign and what it was like there. I think it was, he came in with a good reputation, really good reputation. And like Ian said, he hit the ground running and the great escape, I think, was just unbelievable for fans. And I don't know how you feel about it, Ian, but do you feel like that, that run has helped give you a connection to the fans? I feel like you've always had quite a good, really good backing from supporters. Throughout I think the so, years, Jake. Yeah, I think, um, you know, you see the reaction after we stayed up. I think I think most people, when when we first come in, it, it had accepted relegation. Um, and certainly after the first three games, you know, I accepted it as well. So, um, but as I said before, you know, by bringing a Harry Anderson in, um, who's probably one of the best players I've ever, ever worked with in non-league football, um, just turned the season for me on its head. James Klotsky, as you say, came in towards the end and give us a bit more stability and strength in midfield. Um, and everyone, but you have to get the players to buy in what you're trying to do. Um, and they did that. Um, but it, again, I'd also like to think, Jake, that I'm, I'm quite open, I'm quite honest. And, uh, you know, I'm the first to blame myself if, if we've not got things right. Uh, and hopefully the honesty has, has adhered me to the supporters as well. I mean, the one thing I'd love to do is, is give them a trophy or, or give them, again, another Carlisle day because they deserve that. You know, the supporters, 
even last year we were still getting six or seven hundred in, and it, and we was getting beat quite heavily in some games. Four one against Weymouth, um, three three was it three against someone else, and the whole season really looked like it was going to fall apart. And uh, you know, even to the owners, they they kept their nerve. As I said before, and I'll say it again, at any one time on a Sunday, I felt I could get a phone call during that real bad spell to say that the, the job was no longer mine, but. I think they look back and look at the the good times we've had, and, and they stayed loyal to me, and and hopefully they've had the rewards this year by being loyal. Um, but again, as I say, the supporters have been fantastic. Is that uh, you know I can't I can't complain. They get behind the team every single home game, uh, and certainly some of the away games. I remember Wildstone a couple of years ago. The support was absolutely fantastic, and, and I certainly know in the last couple of games when we had to go to Maidenhead and Wildstone in the season we stayed up. They turned up in, in, in twos and three hundreds to support us them games as well. So they've been great. So how how hard has it been for you as a manager knowing that you kind of have this? As I to be fair, every manager probably has it, but this care for the the, the fans that this season when we're we're doing so well that they couldn't be there for what well, they were there for one league game. I, I, I think we've been I think we've been fortunate in terms of the streaming um, is is massively. Um, helped in terms of what we're doing um that the highlights package as well as has shown a lot more people um some of the performances some of the games um and i just think you showed in the one game where we did open up against tombridge that we we sold 700 tickets in a day and a half so jake will tell you this town will turn out for you if you're if you're playing well and you're playing at a good standard or you're playing against a good team this this town will turn up for, for St Albans City Football Club and we showed it against Carlisle um, Torquay a couple of years ago there was 1900 in there you see in non-league days we get up to 1500 so I know if we could get into the National League that, that on a regular basis that we would be able to churn out crowds between sort of 1500 to 2000 on a regular basis um, we've seen with you know, some of the away teams with your Wrexhams and, and Stockports and teams like that, they, they bring a good travelling crowd. And I just think the atmosphere would be absolutely unbelievable. And it'd be nice to to do something like that uh, uh, because it is a big town, as we've said it before. It's as big as, you know, I think that it's as big as what Stevenage can be. It's as big as what Barnet is. So, you know, we can get the 2,000 people in on a regular basis. Um, and there's no reason not to and, to... and to be fearful of that, there's no reason to be fearful of it because we can do it and we know we can do it if the football's good. Yeah. So now also we are just going to take another trip back quickly. And obviously someone you've touched upon who I would say is arguably the closest to home we've had yet. So if we can just bring him in now, which hopefully technology pending. Oh my is. good God. <laughs> Have you had a haircut yet? So me? <laughs> yeah. God yeah. almighty. This is like, this is your life, isn't it? I know it's unbelievable. It's fantastic. I can't believe, I can't believe Junior was on here. He's brilliant. <laughs> Fantastic. Quality. Uh, how are you? He only rang me about 20 minutes yeah, ago. Yeah, I know, just warning you up. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, what was it like, obviously, getting to work with your dad at St Albans? Um, he mentioned those, those first few games when you arrived. You, you had that little conversation with each other, looked at each other, thought, were you in the right place? Yeah, what I was mean, it like? I remember the Bath game. Um, we travelled my first, my first game. I never met the players, obviously. I'd had the altercation with Sam Corcoran a year or so earlier. So it was always difficult. And I remember going down on the worst coach you've ever seen to Bath. <laughs> and it was the, wor the worst performance I've ever witnessed from a Conference South team. Uh, we got played off the park. And I remember waking up on a Sunday morning and I said to my wife, I said, I've got to go and tell him. I've got, I've got to leave. I've got to go back to Biggleswade. And uh, I went round in the morning and said, like, listen, <laughs> I think I've got to go back. Like, this is, this is not good. And and he said to me, listen, you want to chuck the towel and you can, but I'm going to give it a go. And listen, best thing we ever done because um, the turnaround from there was was phenomenal. And um, it was a pleasure to do it in the end. It was, yeah. as I said before, you know, we were lucky that the players bought into what we was trying to do um, because you could go into them situations um, and if the players don't buy into it, you, you, you're stuck and then you've got to move players on and bring new players in. And that was the... Uh, the one thing that, that we said we would do, but we didn't want to get relegated, did we? That was the most important thing because it's hard to come out of the league below as you full well know with, with Hendon yeah, where you are now. Exactly. Yeah, and, and so obviously you had quite a unique 
relationship in football in that you don't see many father son manager assistant manager combinations what, what what's it like and, and what are the difficulties I don't I, I mean I'm, I'm speaking for myself here but I, I didn't there were, I don't think there was any difficulties you know it was um it, it, it just kind of flew we, we think the same obviously I've been brought up watching watching my dad for for years so you know the the, the biggest sort of knowledge I got out of it and you know was not to panic and and we didn't panic and dad never panicked and and it was just, just, it just flowed. It really did. It was, it was very good. And, you know, it was a, it was a horrible day, the day that I left the football club because I, I still imagine I'd probably still be there now and, and enjoying my time. It was good. We, we were good. We were going in the right direction. Yeah, we had a blip, um, but it's a good football club and, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I don't think we had one argument as a management team. There was never a disagreement. We very much think the same. Um, and, and it just kind of, you know, we knew when things weren't right and, and it just worked. So for me, it was it was a, it was a pleasure, as I say, and I learned so much from the experience and I take it into where I am now. Um, it, it was thoroughly enjoyable. Yeah, I think he's, I think he's dead right. At the end of the day, we, we always discuss what he was trying to do, um, always discuss players. The thing is with Lee, he's at that different age now and he, and he knows a lot of players, um, which was good. Um, he's played against a lot of players, but he knows he, he got that 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 younger element that I'd probably lost by being at the age I am now. In terms of the players that I knew, I'd outgrown a lot of them, um, so he knew a lot of the, the the ones coming through. You look at Solomon Sambu, you look at um, uh, Kyron. What's not Kyron? Um, Maurice Morel. What was his name in midfield? Uh, Kieran Mon Louis. Kieran Mon Louis. You know, they're the sort of players that Lee brought in for a trial game and we signed them straight away. And and that was the difference that he just knew a slightly different style of player to where I was at that stage. Um, and, and that's the difference now is that, you know, I have to, you know, though I've never really dealt with agents in the past, I'm having to deal with them now because the players of, of, of my elk have run out and it's all the younger ones coming through. So we have to speak to agents now and try and deal with them. And uh, it's very frustrating on some occasions as well, trust me. So, so also that that red card the year before you joined Lee, I think based on what your dad said earlier, that means you had a worse disciplinary record against St Albans than yeah, he had I in his whole career. I think that's right. And uh, listen, I, I just uh, courts plays for me now. Great. I was just thinking then about the, the team we had at, at the first year, and if we could have carried that into the second year, but we lost to the likes of Eddie Ashodi and Corks chased ten pound up the road for a little bit more money and never got in the side. <laughs> There's probably never been the same player ever since. Um, but yeah, as I say, it was a, he done me in the first game and I swore blind I would get him back. Listen, it was totally the wrong time, but I did intentionally try to do him as well. And uh, we got a great relationship now, me and Corks. And, and as I say, I got sent off, but it was it was one of them things. And uh, I didn't envisage being his assistant manager a year down the line. And that was a, that was a strange feeling. But li- great lad, Lee, Lee Chapel, Sam Corcoran, Charlie McDonald. You go through the list of the players we had. They, they were superb. What they give us, you know, if we'd have gone in two, three months earlier, I think we'd have got in the playoffs. We, I, I was thinking this the other day, I don't know if that agrees or not, but we've got to remember we had Dartford on the last game of the season. If Dartford won, they were in the playoffs. We mm. absolutely tore them to shreds. We beat them up and we virtually spat them out in the end. We were phenomenal. Um, and I think that showed how far we'd come. It was a shame the season stopped because I didn't see it. We were like a steam train. We, you know, we were... We were flying and, um, you know, Harry Anderson, Charlie McDonald, they were, they were different class fella. You know, the list goes on. It was it was superb. It was a pleasure to be a part of him. It was a shame we had to literally rebuild in the end, but that's football. I'll say when you look at Michael Fallacitas and Charlie McDonald and Leo, Louis Leo, F- yeah. Fiapunas, that was some front three, wasn't it? And then, as you say, you look at, you look at what else that, that you lost. Eddie Ashodi was outstanding in that running, wasn't he? And, uh, you know, it's just a shame we lost so. And Harry Anderson, you know, you see, I mean, as I said before, he's probably one of the best non-league players I've ever, I've ever, ever managed. That performance he had at Hayes and Yedin, yeah. and that was at Maidenhead. No one got near him that day, and uh, just, you know, just a pleasure to be involved with some of these boys as well. And uh, as I said, they did great. As I said, to, to go on the run that we went on, and I think it was something like twenty-eight points out of a, out of a thirty-three or something like that was it was an outstanding performance. And uh, just just before we, we we sort of bring this to a close, Lee, are there any stories that that are uh, 
PG enough to go you know out on the podcast. I've actually, I have actually got... just thought of one, and it's quite funny. And he, I don't think he'll mind me saying it was it was what we'd. I th- it was that season where we had Junior. I still say to this day, if we kept Junior Marias and and we'd have kept Eddie Ashodi, I believe we'd have, we'd have gone up that year. No no question of a doubt. We were some side. But it, it was, we, we had Bath at home and Ben Martin, I don't know what Ben was up to for three or four days before the game, but he come and we we had to bring him on. And um, he, he had a stinker, he cost us one or two. He won't mind me saying this, Ben, I really like Ben, he's a great lad. And uh, he come in the change rooms and <laughs> he threw his size 14 studs in the bin uh, and said, that's me done, I don't think I'll ever play again. And lo and behold, we went to Truro the following week and uh, Ben got on the coach and we said, we've got to put him in the side for his size and, and what have you. So we got there, the pitch is really muddy and Ben had no boots. He only had moulds um, <laughs> and he had to wear them. He just couldn't write out. But listen, it wasn't right then. And it, but you look back now, it, it was funny. And, uh, you know, what a, what a great lad and a great servant to the football club. But I'm sure he won't mind me sharing that story. It was a, it was a good one. <laughs> Tom, did, 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 I, I, I don't... Yeah. You haven't been able to listen what's been going on before, have you? No. Well, Tom Bender was on just now, and he gave a story that he passed the ball to Ben that game. He went under the Ben's foot, and I blame Tom Bender <laughs> for passing it to him. <laughs> that, is, that is probably right as well. That is probably right. <laughs> it was. Um, I think Ben was like he was just he was like Bambi on ice oh, that day, was. wasn't he? It's I think. I, I, listen again. It's a, it, it's a funny story, but remember when we played? Who was it we played? It might have even been. Somebody at home, Ben was kneeling down doing his laces up, and uh, the goalkeeper kicked the ball. <laughs> they were having a warm up. The That's goalkeeper right, yeah. kicked the ball. And I think it was. It. Who was that? It was Truro again, was it? Or haven't? Truro? He, he haven't? rolled his ankle. Or... <laughs> no, he'd done his <laughs> knee in. The, the guy who was catching the ball came backwards, pedaled, pedaled backwards, and went straight into Ben, and Ben twisted his knee and couldn't play. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> Crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, great lads. Yeah, we, uh, we had some good boys. They were they were good lads. You know, it just um, it was a shame that we lost Junior. And, I mean, <laughs> even Theo. I mean, I remember our first game with Theo, and he didn't even want to come on to get out of him. What we did in the end, he was superb, Theo, and it just didn't quite work in the end with losing Junior, losing Theo. We we're, were very unlucky, you know, and uh, we tried to replace, and and I think we we got it right and. It's an, you've had a great season this year as well, and it's such a shame what's happened. It really is, and um, I think you'd have, you'd have, you'd have been up there this year because you were a good side. So always keep an eye out for the result and watch the game when the stream works. And uh, uh, it's been it's, it's been a pleasure watching. So hopefully, uh, when the season re really kicks off in in August time, we, you, you'll be up there again. Well, let's see if we can maybe get it turned over before Hopefully. then. So let's do something old. I'll keep my fingers crossed, but I don't think... uh, Let's just have to wait and see where we are with it all now. So it's crazy, but good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for joining me. Cheers. (laughs) Take care. (laughs) Bye-bye. See you later. See you later. Bye-bye. Yeah, now now I think just just before we, we wrap this up, I guess this is a chance for you now um because it's a lot more difficult to do so in the times we're in and maybe jake can help by asking a question that he might know on the fans is there anything you, you you'd like to address to the fans that, that you can who me yeah i just as i said to you it's just um i just think they've been absolutely fantastic um i think the community has been great in terms of coming together it's been a really difficult 11 months and let's be fair and it has been stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. Um, but the supporters of, 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 and that goes to like the sponsors, that goes to um, the, the media team, that goes to my staff, the players, the, the owners, I have to, you know, say have been absolutely brilliant. Not once have they pulled me in to say, we've got to cut this or cut this. You know, they've supported everything that we've tried to do. Um, they've got right behind the club. And I know they're still working extremely hard behind the scenes to get a new stadium for us. Um and, and the supporters have been absolutely great. If you, you know, you've seen that when, when we played Tombridge, when we, you know, with, with the streaming that goes on. And I just think the, the whole club has really come together in terms of where we want to go, where we want to get to. Um, and just hopefully, you know, my, my health stays well and the club want me to stay and I can stay here for a, a few more years yet. So, you know, if things did change, then you'd have to certainly 
you know, I'm not getting any younger where, where we are, you know, COVID t- took a bit of a toll over the Christmas period. Um, but I just really would like to try and finish this season off with what we've got um, and be given that opportunity to do that because I really do believe we've got a, a really good squad. Um, but as I say, you know, the, the supporters have been great. They've been loyal. We asked them to stay loyal. We asked them to stay behind the, behind the boys, behind the team. And thank you guys because you media guys have been absolutely brilliant. You know, you've done a fantastic job. You know, the website's been absolutely first class. The streaming's been first class. We've had a few hitches. We know that. But when, when you're doing something like that, you, you're going to get some hiccups over the course of a season. Um, and also, you know, the support's been great. You know, it works great, apart from when Ben's trying to interview somebody and I'm trying to talk on the other corner. So it's uh, <laughs> it's a difficult one. So I had him in my ear, didn't I, last week? I couldn't. That was so difficult. Now I know why people <laughs> wear ear pierces. So it's... Uh, <laughs> I don't know if, Jake, you've got any last questions. I mean, to Ian, I just think back to the Braintree game last season. You know, it was such a strange day, wasn't it? You know, and your, your statement after the game sort of, I think, connected with a lot of fans. And I think the support we had away from home that day was superb and how important it was. And obviously we had the Tombridge game this season, but how much are you looking forward to having the fans back at Clarence Park and on the road next season, really getting behind the boys? Oh, without a shadow of doubt. And, and the thing is with us, Jake, and I've said it all along, we have quite a very loyal um, older element of supporters that have been supporting the club for a long, long time. When we played Tombridge, there was a lot of new people, a lot of younger ones, a lot of people that sort of bought into what we was trying to do. Now, if, if we can get to grips with this pandemic and the vaccine does help to bring all the old smiley faces black with the younger ones, we could have a fantastic atmosphere down there. Um, and it'd just, be, it'd just be nice to see a smile on everybody's face because, as I say, the, the 11 months have been extremely tough for everybody. Um, you know, I think it's over 120,000 people have, have lost their lives. And, and I know the football club, my heart, the football club's heart go to all those people who have lost loved ones. I said to you, I've, I've gone and John, done John Fenley's funeral this afternoon and that was lovely. And while we've been on the phone, I've had a, a lovely message from his, from his daughter. Um, and, and it was just nice to give somebody like John, who, who's put nearly 20 years of his life behind being the kit man at this football club. And I've seen what he's done and some of the characters, um, Paul Bostock turned up today, drove all the way down from Kings Lynn to be at his funeral, which was fantastic. Gary Roberts was there, an old manager of St Albans was there. Um, so to see them people at his funeral today was fantastic. And remember, you can only have 30 people at a funeral at the moment. So, you know, if we could have had a full full turnout, that you know, I'm sure most of the players would have come. You see Junior, how, how high he spoke of Fenners and I know Lewis Gordon at the time, you know, sent out messages. So, you know, the football club has, has, has got a real heart um, and, and the heart is, is, is literally our, our fan base. And, and if we can bring them back, put a smile on their face, hopefully, you know, start enjoying life again. And uh, the best way to do that is through football. And let's hopefully we can get them back as quick as we can and, and put a smile on everybody's face. Yeah, I think that's one of the key aspects of football at this level is the community you get. So it's nice to see that that even right down to the playing staff, you're you're getting affected by it as well. Exactly, uh, exactly. So thank you for listening to From the Park, episode three. Uh, be sure to subscribe on our YouTube or follow us on Spotify and you can keep up with every episode that we post.